All right, sometimes I edit out videos when something's screwed up and uh, it makes me look bad. But in this case, when I, at the end of the last video, the ping wasn't working. I figured out why, and I figured out why. Over here on my side of the network, I had my router connected correctly and incorrectly. So this was supposed to be FA00, and this is supposed to be FA01, but they were switched. And it took me an embarrassingly long time to figure that out. So uh, yeah, so check your cables, the, the layer one, uh, important stuff. So anyway, um, now everything's configured. I can ping from this router out to the RichNet router. I can ping between the routers and I can ping from my PCs to my PCs. Uh, so that proves that this stuff's working. That proves I have IP connectivity between the routers and it proves that I have IP connectivity out to the RichNet between the routers. But now we need to worry about routing a little bit. If we go to our routers, and run show IP routes and look at the output. That's the 2811. And this is the 40, 42 or 4300, depending on what we're looking at. If we look at our routing table, if we look at the 2811, we have three connected networks. So by default, your router will automatically be able to route between connected networks. So here we have these three interfaces we created. We have a route for each of those directly connected networks. So uh, same thing over here, although this newer updated version of the code is also showing us this, this uh, L uh, route, which is a local route, which tells you that it is directly connected to this specific IP address. So this is the IP address that's on the, the 2811. And then this is the um, sorry, that's the local IP address that's connected, and this is the local IP address uh, on the on the outside interface. So what we're worried about is the connected routes in this case. So what this tells us is our routers our our routers can route traffic between networks that they are connected to. So if we go consider what that means in terms of our topology, this router can connect can send traffic to anything on this network anything on these two networks. And this router can send traffic to anything on this network and anything on this 192.168.243.0 network. So what that means is if we try to ping from this PC to this PC, it will work because they're all connected. If we try to ping from this PC to this interface, it will work because they're connected. If we try to ping from this PC to this router interface, this router interface is connected to this this uh, this router, so the traffic this router will be able to send the traffic back to that out to that router. But when it gets to that router, that router has no route for these PCs down here. So what do I mean by that? These PCs are 10.243.133.0 and 32. So if we go look at the routing table and think about what happens when we ping from this PC to this to this interface of this router. Right, it checks the routing table. And it's like, oh hey, do I know? Well, let's go ahead and start the ping. So we're gonna ping 10.243.133.50. Remember, 50 is what I put on this interface. 50 is what I put on this interface. So we're gonna try to ping 50. So what's gonna happen is this 28. Uh, this 2811 is gonna be like, oh hey, can I send traffic to 10.243.1? Well, actually, let's start at the beginning. At the beginning, this, this router is gonna look at its default route. It's gonna to wanna to send that traffic. I'll send it, it's gonna fail. Just listen, it's gonna fail. We'll wait, we'll, we'll demonstrate it failing in a minute. So first thing, this PC is gonna be like, hey, is, is 10.243.133.50 on my subnet is there, or is it on a different subnet? It's on a different subnet, I need to send it to my router. So it's going to send it to its router. The router is going to be like, oh, 10.243.133.50. Yeah, I have a route for that. Let me send it out FA01. So it sends it out FA01 to this, this router. And this router is all like, oh, hey, yo, 10.243.133.50. That's me. This packet's for me. Yay. So it's going to process that packet. And it's going to be like, okay, this is an ICMP echo request. I need to reply. This ICMP echo re request came from... 10.243.133.2. Do I have a route for 10.243.133.2? It's like, nope, I have this route for 10.243.133.48 slash 30, and I have a route for 10.192.168.243.0. 
neither one of those routes match. I don't have a, a default route set. I do not know what to do with this packet. So in this case, this packet did not get back because that router did not know what to do with it. He got to this router and this router said, I don't know what to do with it. So the way we're going to fix that is we're going to add a static route for the 10.243.133.0 network. A couple of different ways we could do this. We're going to do this the most simple and most general way. We're going to use the IP route command. And we're going to put the subnet we want to route for, which is 133.0. And we want that to have a 24-bit a, uh, mask. We're just going to summarize everything inside this router. We know that in this, in this scenario, everything inside this route, 10.243.133.0, only exists inside this router. So we're going to add this route. The syntax of that is IP route, the network address, the subnet subnet mask and then we need to tell it the next hop uh, the next hop there's a lot of different things we can tell it this this calls it the forwarding routers address also known as the next hop sometimes or or the uh, gateway for that or the yeah that's what we'll call it so we need to tell it which router interface we want to send it to and we want to send it to the fa01 on this router and we're going to do that by ip address so we're going to do 10.243.133.49 10.243.133.49. So we added this route. We added that route, and now if we look, we have a route um, I think I hit some other button instead of uh, enter because it exited out of the config and my command didn't go in. So let's try this again. All right, so now, so now we have this static route that shows up, and it says, hey, anything for 10.243.133.0, send it to the other router. So now that we've configured that new route, when the traffic gets to this router, this router should be able to send it back to that router, and that router has a connected route for that network, right? 10.243.133.0 slash 27, it's a connected route, so it should be able to send the traffic. So now, in theory, in theory, it should work. So hey, now I can ping that router interface. So the next step is to see, can we ping the other side of that router interface? And if we look at our routing tables and, and uh, deduce what's gonna happen, the other side of that router interface is 192.168.243.133. So this PC is gonna wanna send it. It's gonna be like, oh hey, 192.168.243.133. That's not on my subnet. I need to send it to my gateway. It's going to get to this router, which is this PC's gateway. It's going to check its routing table. It's going to be like, oh, hey, 192.168.243.133. I don't have a route for that. So this router will not know what to do with that traffic. So just to confirm that, we'll go ahead and send the ping and see that it fails. 133. Destination host unreachable. So yeah, it is not working because the 2811 router does not have a route to send it out there. So we need to do a similar thing. We need to um, add a route. In this case, we could add a specific route for the 192.168.243.0 subnet to send it to this router. But what we're gonna add is a static default route. Normally on your devices going outbound, it's like, okay, route these specific routes and anything else you don't know what to do with, send to that other router. So what we're gonna do is we're going to use the IP route command and the syntax for adding a default route using the IP route command is to put all zeros for the address, all zeros for the mask, and then the IP address of the next hop router. So in this case, we want to send everything to this other router, so that is a syntax for that. If we look at our routing table, we can see Oh, I had a typo, check that out, 10.234.133.50. Since I do not have a interface in that 10.234 subnet, it did not add the route because you have to have an interface in that network for the route to show up. So I need to fix that, 243. And then I also wanna get rid of the bad old one because lots of times you can get unexpected results, unexpected results if you 
uh, have some bad routes in there. So now if we look, now I have a static route that says, hey, the K weighted last resort is set. Here's a static default route. So now if I ping, now if I ping from the PC, the PC will be like, hey, yo, I need to send it to my router, this router. We check the routing table. It's like, oh, yo, anything you don't know what to do with, send to that other router. And now I'll send that, I'll ping, I'll ping again, and it should make it back to me. So yeah, now it's working. So now this router knows how to route, route back to the 10.243.133 subnet. To get it down there this router has a route to send everything else it doesn't know about out to this router uh, and that is that is that for for connectivity over on the other side of my network I have some devices that are 100.100.100. something I think it's dot two don't look at this dot two yeah so um, yeah so what we're gonna do now is we're going to the same thing this router, this router doesn't have a gateway of, of last resort set. So if I try to ping 100, 100, 102, ping 100.100.100.2, it's not going to work. It says, hey, 10.243.133.50, destination host unreachable. So it's telling me who's, who's having the problem. This is 243.50. If we look at the routing table, no, no gateway of last resort is set. So I'm going to add a default route on this router. And I'm going to send this traffic to 243.1. So that's my, I just pointed with my finger. I like that helps you guys. It's so funny when I do that. So this router over here is 243.1. That exists on my network. You don't need to worry about that in the simulator. So now, in theory, if I ping that address, hopefully I should get a reply. And I didn't get a reply. Get destination host unreachable again. So let's check our routing table. Gateway of last resort is not set. Oh, I uh, screwed up my command. My IP route command, I just typed IP. I wonder what that did. It looks like it did something. Or maybe I hit the wrong button again, because it's not there. Uh, whatever. Weird. So anyway, I'm going to put the actual correct command in this time. 0.0.0.0. .0 .0 .0. Uh, 192.168.243.1. Look at my routing table. Hey, now I have a gateway of, of last resort is set. I have the static route showing up. And now hopefully the ping will work. Sometimes the pings fail the first time and it's entirely likely I have something screwed up. Oh no, it worked. So that was how we implemented static routing on, on our network to make it work. To review what we did, this router needed a static route for our LAN subnets to send it back to the uh, subordinate router. This router also needed, needed a default gateway to send anything, a default route to send anything that did not match out to the RichNet gateway. This router needed a default route to send anything out to this router. And that is how we can make our network work with static routing.